Hi there! The day has finally come. Today, we are going to build our own neural network with PyTorch. And this specific neural network is an n-gram model designed to create a story based on a bunch of books that we trained the network on. But before you get too excited, I have to mention that I didn't really optimize this network for maximum accuracy. In fact, it is quite stupid and it shows. Okay? But at least it gives you a nice idea of some of the processes involved in creating your own AI. And once you guys are ready, I highly recommend downloading the starter notebook from the description of the video. And I also recommend training with Google Colab because Google offers you a free GPU. And GPU speeds things up quite a bit. So if you want your model to finish training before the end of the century, definitely use GPU. Okay, so let's start with a quick walkthrough of what I've done so far. So basically, I've loaded three different books into my Google Drive, I've mounted it, and then I pre-processed each and every one of these books in their own separate pre-processing function. And in the end, I've combined all three into a one single database, which I called data, okay? And if we print the first 10 items of data, we can see we can see that they correspond with the first 10 words of the Coraline book, which makes sense because that's the first book we've added, okay? So usually the first thing I do um, with this type of database is converting all these strings into numeric um, values because neural networks, they don't really speak English. This doesn't mean words to them, okay? Neural networks, they speak math, so we need to adjust ourselves accordingly, okay? So let's, uh, let's start. <laughs> First, we need to keep track of all the unique words in our data set. We can do this with set data, and this will get rid of all the repeats. And we can assign it to a variable named uh, vocab, because this is going to be our vocabulary. And another thing we'll need to keep track of is how long is our data set, okay? We can do this with len data, um, and we'll call it, oh, I went too far, and we'll call it vocab size. Cool. So let's quickly print our vocab size just to see what we're dealing with here. So we've got a little over 160,000 words in our database, okay? And if we want to see how many of these words are unique, we'll just print len vocab, okay? Because we already tracked the unique words. So 8,000 of these words are unique. Cool. We can move on. And now it's time for the actual conversion to integers. Now you can either do this the one hot encoding way, which is binary, or you can do this the decimal way with word mappings. And this is what I'm about to do next. Okay. So let's uh, start by creating a brand new variable, which we'll call word to index. Okay. We'll type word I for I word in enumerate vocab. So let's just quickly copy and um, and let's print it with shift enter. And you can see that we have a very, very long dictionary of items that is basically is going to be our legend. So now let's apply these to our data. And we can simply do this with list comprehensions. We'll simply type data equals word to index. And inside the square brackets, we'll specify word for word in data, okay? And if we'll run this through and we'll uh, print again the first 10 items of data, we can see that these are no longer words, okay? These are integers, just as we expected. But is that really the integers that we wanted to see here? Let's double check it. So we can do this with word to index, okay? And inside the square brackets, we'll specify, let's say the first word in our database, which is Coraline. And if we run the cell, we can see that it's matching with the first numeric value of our um, numeric database, which is exactly what we've expected. And that means if we get it right, the next step would be splitting our data into batches. And we do this so we don't overwhelm our neural network. It's very difficult 
to evaluate hundreds of thousands of values at once, okay? That's why we want to do this batch by batch. And the first um, parameter we're going to set is batch size. In my case, it's going to be five, but you can set it up to whichever number you'd like. I think five makes sense because all the network is going to do is it's going to look at the first five words in each batch, and these will be the features, okay? The sixth word would be the target. So based on the first five words, the network is gonna guess the sixth. I hope it makes sense. Um, next, we're going to set the structure of, of our um, training data, and we'll type train data equals, and inside this list, we're going to store a very difficult structure. So I hope you guys will bear with me. So we're going to store our features and target inside a tuple. That's why we're gonna open a set of round brackets, okay? Inside this tuple, we are going to separate our features from the targets with a list, okay? So inside this list of features, we are going to um, set our items. So the first item would be data i, which is the, the first word that we see in the database, okay? Next, we'll have data i plus one, which is the second word we see in our database. And same goes for, um, for the rest of the words up until the fifth word, okay? So let me type it out. And once we type the features, we can tackle the target, okay? So we'll need to set the target outside of, the, of this list and we'll split it with a, with a comma. And the target would be data i plus five. And we don't need to put it in a list because it's just a one single item. And to finish this off, I'm going to, um, I'm, I'm going to finish this complexity with a very nice list comprehension, just like I love it. So we'll type for i in um, range vocab size minus batch size, okay? And if we'll, and if we'll uh, print the first 10 values, we can see how our information is split in real life, okay? So we see that um, the target of our first um, of our first batch is actually the last feature of our second batch. And once our data is numeric and split into batches, we can move on with building our network. So I'm gonna do all the imports off camera and I'll see you in five seconds. So before we proceed with building our actual neural network, it is common to set a few parameters in advance. You can set your um, hidden layers or your embedding dimensions. I'm only gonna do the second. Okay, so let's type embedding dim and we'll set it to an arbitrary number, let's say five. And now we can go ahead and start defining our network. And there's a very easy command to start doing so. Uh, we'll type class and then the name of our neural network, which is storyteller, and then dot module. Oh, module, okay. And inside our neural network, we would usually have two functions, okay? The first one is init, and the second one is forward. So our init function would look like this, def two underscores init, two underscores. And inside our parameters, the first parameter will be self. The second parameter would be our vocab size, Okay, the, the third parameter is the embedding dimension that we just defined, okay? And the last parameter is the batch size. Cool. So the first command is going to be super storyteller, which is the name of the network, um, and then self dot init and closing brackets. The next command will account for the embedding dimensions, okay? So we'll type self embedding, embedding s, sorry, equals to nn embedding vocab size and embedding ding, of course. Oh, embedding, perfect. Next, we will specify our linear transformations, okay? We can simply do this with self 
uh, let's call this layer linear one, okay? And this will be equal to nn dot linear with a capital L. And the first parameter would be our input, which is uh, the batch size times the embedding dimension, embedding dim. And the second parameter would be the output of our network, okay? Um, and I'm gonna set it to 128. So the, the second linear transformation we'll do is self linear two, okay? And this will be equal to nn linear again, but here, instead of specifi specifying batch size times embedding dimension, we will specify 128, which is the output of our previous layer. Uh, layer. So if we say that uh, 512 will be the output of this transformation, on our next layer, 512 will be the input. Hope it makes sense. So let's define our last layer with self linear three equals to nn dot linear. Um, and the input is 512, but the output is our vocab size, okay? Cool, and I think we're done with our um, with our uh, init function. We can move on with our forward function. So we'll define this function with def forward. And as parameters, we're going to have um, self and we're going to have the inputs. Um, next, we are going to specify the embeddings. Okay, so let's do embeds. Okay, and the embeds is equal to self embedding embeddings again i do the same mistake embeddings not embedding okay and inside the round brackets we will pass our inputs okay inputs and then we will need to uh, transform them okay we'll need to do this with view and then inside we'll do one minus one um, next we are going to specify our outputs okay so let's do out equals to capital F dot relu, which is another transformation that we want to do on our data. And inside the round brackets, we'll specify our first linear layer. Okay, so let's do self dot uh, linear one. And inside uh, the round brackets, we'll specify embeds, okay, which is uh, the first variable of our function from above. And we're going to do the same for the rest of our layers, okay? So we'll continue once again without. We'll do again f dot relu, and inside we'll specify again self dot linear um, two, but instead of passing the embeds, we're gonna pass the out, which is the previous variable from this line. And for our last output, let's type out, we're not gonna need the relu function, okay? So we'll just simply type self linear three, and we'll pass the out variable once again. And now it's time for our last transformation, which would be the softmax function. Um, we can simply do this with uh, log probs equals to f dot log softmax. Okay, this is, this is actually the log softmax, not the regular softmax, sorry. Um, and inside the round brackets, we'll specify our um, variable out, okay, which is the, the last line from here. And we'll also specify on which dimension we should apply this transformation. And in our case, the dimension would be uh, dimension one, okay? And then we would like this function to uh, return the log props. And before I move on, I just noticed a typo. It's vocab size, not vocab size, okay? And once we figured it out, uh, we'll just run the cell, shift enter. Cool, and we're not gonna see anything because we just defined the neural network. We did not uh, let it run. We, we're not training it yet, okay? Um, which brings us to defining our training function. And because this video is getting quite long, I think I'm gonna split it into two parts. So let's just quickly print our model so we'll have it as a reference. Let's start a brand new cell. And inside this cell, we'll type model equals, um, and we are just going to call this class with these parameters. Okay, so let's type 
story teller and inside the round brackets the first parameter would be the vocab size the second one would be the embedding dimension and the last one would be the batch size and then we can print our model and double check that everything looks good so uh, shift enter and we can clearly recognize our model because we see all our transformations in here we see that the input features is the batch size times the embedding dimension which is five times five and we can see that the out features is equal to the length of our database which is exactly what we expected good job if you guys want to learn how to train your model i'll see you in part two of this video very very shortly